a lot of folks come into my office complaining of depression, but they're like, Doc, there's nothing that I need to be depressed about or feel like I should be depressed about. I just seem depressed. What can I do? Well, first things first, we have to figure out what is going on in the body to give you that sense of depression. And one of the first things that I'm always going to be thinking about in this case is what is going on with your gut health? That's number one. Number two is what is going on with your cortisol levels, your adrenals, your fight or flight system. Is something off there in terms of how much cortisol you're producing and when you're producing the cortisol. The next thing I'm gonna be thinking about is what is going on with your hormones. Is there a connection to maybe your period Period? Is there a connection to perimenopause, menopause? Is there a connection to a certain time of the month that's just random? Is there a connection to a certain sequences of events? Is something happening in your life that is triggering your depression and you don't realize it? This is why awareness and some testing is absolutely key to put together to get to the bottom of this. So how can you end up having depression but not gone through something extremely terrible like a, a big trauma or a little trauma or a bunch of little traumas that have built up? Well, oftentimes depression can be a result of not eating enough protein. Now it might sound like a broken record here if you've listened to my series here on perimenopause and menopause, but the reality is we need protein to help us to make serotonin and dopamine. And in particular, proteins help us to have tryptophan and tyrosine. Tryptophan is the precursor to making serotonin. Tyrosine is the precursor to making dopamine. If we do not have sufficient amounts of either one of those, we definitely can end up feeling depressed, apathetic, not wanting to do the things we used to do and not finding joy in some of the things we used to love. So what can we do? Assess what's going on with your protein intake. How much protein are you eating in a day? Now, you don't have to subscribe to apps permanently. You can get like MyFitnessPal, or you can even write it down in terms of grams and see exactly what you are getting. Now, how do you do that? Your palm size here, your hand, that is four ounces there, and your entire hand's about six ounces of protein. One ounce of protein equals seven grams. So. Four times seven, 28, six times seven, 42, little math there for you, but it gives you a sense of what's going on in terms of overall grams of protein. From there, you can take a look and see how much do you get at each meal. Of course, read labels as well, that helps you. Now the next thing is looking at, are you metabolizing your estrogens effectively? What's going on with your gut microbiome? If you have gas, you have bloating, you have any gut issues that go along with your depression, this is a big key. Also looking at food. Do any foods particularly provoke you to not feeling well or changing your mood? Make note. The more that you make notes of this, the more you're going to have a very clear idea of what's going on. Now with the gut microbiome, of course, it's a little harder to look internally. So looking at metabolites from the gut, in particular the indoles, these are endpoint metabolites that our body makes in response to breaking down certain foods. Now these are huge factors when it comes to does my gut work like it should and is it metabolizing hormones like it should? Now, what's the difference between this and taking gut microbiome tests? Well, this tells you targeted, does what you eat convert to what it should? Simple, without all of the minutia of getting confused in between. And this is why I particularly do recommend the Excel internal fitness testing is because this type of testing just helps you target what is going on, what is causing the imbalances in your body. And this is why depression in particular can be looked at by looking at your blood, because we can tell how much metabolites of serotonin you're actually making. So are you utilizing it effectively? Are you making enough serotonin? We can look at dopamine. So that tells us about your protein. It also can tell us in terms of Excel internal fitness testing, what's going on with your gut bugs using the indole metabolites. So these are metabolites that show up in the blood. They also show up in urine as well to tell you, do you have too many gut bugs causing some imbalances or do you not have enough? And that can give you a, lot, a really great idea of, do you have dysbiosis? So a bunch of bacteria that are not balanced in the gut that could be contributing to your depression. Now with the gut, we have this connection from gut to brain. Gut is your first brain, your brain's actually your second brain. Seems crazy, but this gut brain axis, so this communication between your gut and your brain can actually become off if the gut bugs are disturbed 
and they're not communicating properly with your brain and you can end up feeling depressed. Now there's another connection here and it's cortisol. Cortisol is your fight or flight hormone that gets released in response to a stressor. Most people who have been stressed for a long period of time will tend towards having depression. And what's happening here is that the body is not able to make enough of the fight or flight chemicals to keep you going throughout the day. So if you find that something that is startling doesn't even startle you, like a loud noise or an alarm, or someone comes up behind you and says, boo, but you don't even jump, you don't even react to it, this could mean that you might have a lowered sense of the fight or flight system. It just might not be firing as much because it's been taxed for too long. And this can definitely lead to depression and symptoms of depression. So what can you do about this? You can also look at your saliva cortisol testing or with the Excella internal fitness testing, it shows what's going on with your production of xanthines and methylxanthines. These are direct responses in relation to stressors within the body. So this is something to really think about over time in terms of what's going on with your mood. Now, yes, it's easy to consider taking an antidepressant, but unfortunately, antidepressants don't always solve the problem. You might feel worse or you might feel nothing at all from the medication. This is where we have to go back and go, what is the actual issue causing your depression? And depression is very common as we start to head into perimenopause and menopause, as the hormones start to fluctuate, and in particular, as estrogen starts to drop over time. And like I've mentioned before in previous videos, really the connection here with depression is looking at, are you getting in enough protein? Are you getting in enough veggies? So veggies, like six cups a day here, and I mean cups, like a good fist size cup to help you to process those hormones that are going through your gut. And if you're not, and you're not getting variety of your, your veggies, you might actually be having some issues with your gut microbiome not signaling to the brain properly causing depression. So there is a lot of different causes for depression that should be evaluated. And really the key component here is a little bit of awareness and a little bit of testing combined can give you a great picture as to what is really causing your depression. So I'm Dr. Janine Kraus. I have plenty of resources over at my website at drjkrausnd.com. I also have a couple of free courses as well that you can check out to help you to gain more information as to how to become aware of your body with proper testing. Remember, test and don't guess when it comes to becoming your own best doctor.